The next speaker is uh, Vanessa Fron that will talk about uh, the modeling, uh, modeling the, Sun the Sunyev Zeltovich effect towards a distant galaxy cluster with the ALMA interferometer. Yes, thank you. Uh, I hope it's the same. Maybe it's still there. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, so, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, my name is Vanessa Kohn, and I just finished my master thesis. So, I'm technically still a master student at the moment uh, at the University of Bonn. And today I will present uh, what I've done in my master thesis and what are my results. So the title of my master thesis is Modeling the Sanya Salovich effect towards a distant galaxy cluster with the ALMA interferometer. And on the top, you can already see this distant galaxy cluster that I've studied, which is called XMMU2235. Uh, so hopefully the slide is changing now. Yeah. Uh, so here you can see. Um, the, the galaxy cluster again and as a false color image from optical and from infrared observation uh, with the X-ray uh, contours in green. But first, uh, I want to motivate why I studied this cluster. So on the left side, you can see a plot where you can see the redshift on the X-axis uh, and the mass on the Y-axis. And you can see that uh, there is a tendency of having lesser galaxy clusters at higher redshifts. At the same time, the low redshift clusters have a tendency to have a higher masses than the high redshift clusters. And since this uh, galaxy cluster XMMU2235 does not follow completely this relation, so it has a high redshift of 1.4, but it also has a high mass of 4.4 times 10 to the 14 solar masses. Um, so this it seems to be really interesting. Uh, and so we want to find more characteristics of it. For example, uh, I want to look in the, at the temperature profile. Uh, so high galaxy clusters have a tendency to have hotter cores since they were not enough time to radiate the heat away. Um, and thus, uh, I want to see if this galaxy cluster had enough time uh, to cool, so to develop a cool core, which would mean that the temperature would drop from the outer part by about 20% uh, to the inner part. And to look at this, we have to look into the X-ray data that was already made. Um, and so there was already a, a X-ray analysis of this data by Dominic Eckert, uh, who did this temperature analysis. So here you can see the, the radius on the x-axis and the temperature in kilo electron volt on the y-axis. And you can see that the error bars are really high. Uh, so we can't really distinguish a profile here. And so we can't say anything about the core. So my goal was to constrain a temperature profile with TSC data. So uh, with the thermal Sunday Solovich effect. So, uh, but first, what is the Sanya Salovich effect, uh, the, the thermal one. So we have a hot plasma in the galaxy cluster, and this plasma consists of energetic electrons. If a photon from the CMB gets Compton scattered on such an ele energetic electron, uh, we can observe this as the thermal Sanya Salovich or short TSC effect. Uh, since it doesn't matter if the uh, if the photon gets scattered first and then redshifted on the way to us, uh, or if it gets redshifted first and then scattered on a low redshift cluster, uh, this effect is redshift independent for every resolved cluster, uh, which makes it a good way to study such a high redshift cluster at 1.4. Uh, but uh, now we can we can look into uh, how this is described. So here we have uh, the, the intensity shift uh, that this uh, TSC effect is causing. So we have it in Nigerjansky crystal radiant with the zero um, being the CMB intensity itself. And on the x-axis, 
you can see the frequency in gigahertz. And for lower frequencies, there's a decrement in the CMB intensity. And for higher frequencies, there's an increment in the CMB intensity. Uh, these two gray bands you can see here, uh, these are from the observations I used for my study, but I will come to that in a moment. First, uh, I want to say, uh, I want to describe it with this equation. So here we have the, the intensity shift uh, divided by the CMB intensity. And this is equal to a function of frequency times the Compton Y parameter. The Compton Y parameter itself uh, gives the integrated electron pressure along one line of sight. Um, so here the electron pressure is defined as the electron number density times the temperature, which gives a unit of kilo electron volt per cubic centimeter. The Compton Y parameter itself is unitless, <clears throat> and for a galaxy cluster, it has a characteristic value of 10 to the minus 4. So um, the, the uh, observations that I got now, um, which I showed before in the intensity shift is here with a central frequency uh, of 94 gigahertz and the upper central frequency of 106 gigahertz. Uh, these observations were done in cycle two, so in 2014 um, with ACA and ALMA as you can see. And you can see that there is even uh, with such a low intensity difference, there is uh, still a change in the intensity distribution uh, in the radio observations. And so the, the sorry, the question is uh, what, how did I uh, model this now? Um, so since I wanted, I, I want to model the uh, electron pressure, uh, I use the uh, generalized Navarro Frank White profile or short GNFW profile. Uh, for this, I use the dimensionless radius, which is x, um, and this is divide. Uh, this is the radius r divided by r five hundred. Uh, with this, we can also like with r five hundred. And assuming a sphere, we can also um, get a mass for this, for, for an object like this. Uh, and Arnold et al. found out that we can have a characteristic pressure, which just depends on M500 um, and the redshift you're looking at. With that and a normalization factor of P0, uh, we can then have the amplitude of our electron pressure profile. In the denominator, there's also the uh, variable C500, which is the concentration parameter at R500. And then we have the slopes alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see how these slopes are changing the profile. So uh, on the top, uh, on the x axis of each time, the dimension is radius, and on the y axis, the electron pressure. On the top, you can see when varying gamma, uh, the innermost part of the slope is changing, uh, the, the innermost part of the profile. When varying alpha, the intermediate part is changing, and when varying beta, the outermost part is changing. Since I'm mo mostly interested in getting the, uh, the profile in the center to constrain uh, the electron pressure in the center mostly of the cluster, uh, I also focused uh, on the on very gamma, and therefore I also fixed alpha and beta. So uh, how do I do this modeling? So I use the um, algorithm in the Bayesian statistics, uh, which is called Markov chain Monte Carlo or short MCMC. And after 1,300 steps in an MCMC, uh, this can look like this. So here we have the values on the x-axis and the counts, uh, from the MCMC in the y-axis. Um, this is y500. So we had before the Compton y parameter, which was the integrated electron pressure along one line of sight. And here y500 is the integrated electron pressure along a cylinder with the radius r500. Uh, this allows us 
uh, to get a better overview over the whole cluster and not just over the one line of sight since the galaxy cluster is normally more extended than one line of sight. So here you can see um, that uh, I got from, from this, uh, I got the, the error by dividing the cumulative area by the total area uh, and getting the X values from these uh, when reaching this, this percentage um, as the errors for my for my um, map value. And I got here a 1.6, uh, 86 times 10 to the minus five meter per sec squared. And now I compared it to the Culver House value, so to literature value, um, which got uh, 1.87 times 10 to the minus five megaparsec squared, which is really good. And the errors from Culver House at all are lower because the signal to noise ratio was better than from the ACA data. So maybe for the AMA it would have looked different, but this is just as an example because my results um, look a little bit different. So here are my results. Uh, here I varied not just one parameter, but two parameters. You can see the ALMA data in blue and the ACA data in pink. Also, I added here the joint or combined data in black. And uh, you can see that uh, I also added a prior, a Gauche in prior for the mass. Um, with uh, with the mean of 0 0.44 times 10 to the 14 solar masses, which was from the X-ray measurements from Rosati et al. So from this, uh, I obtained, so from the joint data, I obtained um, a mass of 3.7 times 10 to the 14 solar masses and a gamma of 0 0.17. And then I wanted to check how this, uh, these parameters will behave if I change, if I vary a third parameter. So I also vary the concentration parameter C500. So this is uh, then the corner plot with also very C500. You can see uh, this, the same things. And this is also the same prior uh, for the mass as for- Three the, minutes. Thank you. Uh, as for very two parameters. Uh, and here I got a mass of uh, 4.5 times 10 to the 14 solar masses, gamma of 0 0.31, and a C500 value of 2.1. But how, what does it say now? So we can look at the profiles of them with the mean uh, and the according errors, which looks like this. So on the left, we have just the varying M500 and gamma, uh, which is which both are changing more of the innermost profile and thus we have a more constrained model, especially on the outer parts. And when also wearing C500, you can see it's changing the outermost part a lot and thus the error is there, uh, not as constrained and we call it a relaxed model. Uh, this is everything which can be done with the TSC data, but uh, the electron pressure can be um, expressed as the electron number density times the temperature. And if we arrange this equation, we get the uh, electron temperature profile if we have the an electron number density profile, which we can get from the X-ray analysis. So here we have the data from the X-ray analysis, again, from, uh, done by Dominic Eckert. And uh, I try to, or I, needed to uh, make a profile to it. So I choose a beta profile with a simple Python fit. And here you can see the equation from the beta profile, but you can see that the electron number density is higher in the uh, near the center than this profile really fits. And so I tried a double beta profile, which is uh, one beta profile plus another beta profile. And here you can see this fits it much better. Uh, I also added here already the 68% interval to illustrate the errors of this Python fit better. So using then um, 
the electron pressure profile, the electron pressure profile from the TSC data, the electron number density profile from the X-ray data, we can get the temperature profile. And this is what it looks like. So here we have on the x-axis, again, the radius on the y-axis, the electron temperature in kilo electron volt. And you can see um, there are different, of course, they're differently constrained because they're differently constrained electron pressure profiles. But for both cases, uh, we have a mild evidence of an increase of the temperature of the data, uh, which would conclude into in a hot core. And this is in contradiction to the already made X-ray studies. So how could we confirm or improve on these results? And there's two things. We can, one, uh, tighten the constraint of the mass with the Carver House Y500 value, which I haven't done yet because the conversion from Y500 to M500 needs more assumptions. And I wanted to test it with the basic model first with the X-ray mass. And furthermore, one could add more radio data to constrain the uh, profile parameters. For example, from the Sunny Salovich array, which already did some observations of this cluster. So the data just need to be analyzed with the separate MCMC and then added to the joint results. So uh, in summary, I observed the high redshift mass of galaxy cluster with a TSC effect to get the temperature profile using additional X-ray data. And this gives a hint of a hot core, which is uh, in agreement with our uh, theory. So thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you, Vanessa, for this uh, really interesting uh, to topic. Um, so there are many questions. Yes, yes, one from jo Joshua. Joshua. Hi, this is, yeah, okay, cool. Hi, thank you for your very nice talk. Um, I simply wondered if you ever image your residuals between your model and the data. Yes, yes. Um, okay. I also can show it because I have it here. But oh, amazing. <laughs> I didn't want to, to include it because it's not this, like, it's it's not, this interesting to show and it's take a lot of time, but I really like this. So <laughs> I wanted to at least include it in the in the backup slides. So here we have the profile. Uh, and then we have we can see that there is a non non-galaxy anymore, a non-galaxy cluster. But I think what I forgot to say is that I not even used the images, but I did all the modeling in the UV plane. Um, so this is also, uh, I subtracted it in the UV plane itself. Um, yeah, I totally forgot this because I was. Okay, sorry, may I ask one more follow-up question, if that's okay? Yes, yes. So I just wondered on the physics here. So if you often go to your, for instance, your catalog uh, with mass versus redshift, the most highest clusters are often extreme mergers like El Gordo or uh, the Bullet cluster. And here you find like a single resolved cluster, uh, which apparently well described by a single profile. What does this mean in terms of cosmology? Like how long does it take to form such a single profile instead of a merging thing with such a high mass and such high red shift? Um, I'm not really sure if I can answer this uh, properly. So I think, okay. So um, the thing is that this cluster um, is high redshift and this also like the star formation already stopped in the core. Um, I'm not sure how long this would take, but I think this is also a special thing on this cluster that it already stopped at this high redshift. Um, yes. Yeah, cool, okay. very cool, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you, Vanessa, again, 